Secret weapons do not exist. Let me explain. This short video is inspired by the fact that I often received in the comments some sort of scolding because uh, some usually American uh, viewer wants to tell me that if the United States has some weapons in the public domain, then for sure, in secret, there's something already working that is much, much, much better. Now, this is magical thinking, and if you think about this, from one side, I really don't blame the viewers. Um, there are so many channels that actually ride this wave of mysterious high-tech projects. From the other side is typically American, it's cultural. So there is no individual blame in that. However, I believe that it is magical thinking and I explain you why. I'm surely not saying that there are not uh, secret programs or black programs in development in the United States. There are probably quite a few. And probably most of the US programs started as secret programs. And probably there are secret programs that are born and die without anyone knowing because, well, they were just not as successful as it was expected. However, a secret weapon is something different from a secret program. And even the secret that envelops these programs generally doesn't do the same for weapons. Just think from a logical perspective, what does the secret do in a military context? Well, secret is a force multiplier. A secret weapon is expected to be a surprise on the battlefield, so it is a way of achieving tactical or operational or in rare cases strategic surprise. In fact, what is kept secret normally? Well, communications, because giving away your plans is a guarantee that you won't have the element of surprise. Numbers describing the quantity and the availability of your forces, of the friendly forces, because knowing exactly the order of battle of the enemy, again, gives away the element of surprise. Performances are often kept secret because they give an element of incertitude on the battlefield. If a pilot is uncertain about the operational range of the opponent's air to air weapons, well, um, he will probably be more cautious. Also, a very close secret is kept on everything surrounding electronic warfare, surveillance systems, electronic countermeasures, and so on. Because, well, this is not a matter of surprise, could be, but it's not a matter of surprise. The real point is that these weapons are almost, these features are almost one shot. In the sense, if you have a clever way of deceiving the opponent's radars, for example, it is very, very likely that when the opponents see it, well, they will probably find a solution. And by the way, this is an important subject because modern armed forces need to have the flexibility of adapting and neutralizing this kind of electronic uh, uh, threats uh, relatively quickly. Today, everything is driven by software and the capability of patching a system software just to neutralize a electronic warfare technique is paramount. And this is true not only for electronic systems, but also for kinetic systems, but yeah, well, I am digressing. However, we are not talking about features or performances. Here we are talking entire weapon systems. I mean, I had people writing to me saying that the United States already has the SR-72 in service in various squadrons that are ready ready to attack China if and when it will be necessary, hopefully never, but yeah. Some other people tell me that the Engad is already in service and the serial production is starting. Well, yeah, if you follow my videos or just follow the news, you know that this is not true and there is a real possibility it will be never true. 
but the prize of the most entertaining goes to those who email me and tell me that secretly the United States has in service a single stage to orbit space plane that is capable of delivering precision strikes on the other side of the world in 90 minutes. Yeah, sure, I like Star Wars too. So it is impossible to keep the lid on any program that is going to produce a large system in reasonable number. And even if it was small numbers, that would be difficult as well. But today, since everyone has a phone in his pocket and a camera, it's probably is ridiculous. News will emerge. In each one of these big programs, there are thousands, if not tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people being involved. It is literally impossible that all these people never drop a hint of what is happening. It is more likely with smaller projects, for example, weapons, missiles, artillery rounds, specific variants of a guided missile, because these things are not as readily available, are not as readily visible, but even in this case, something will appear at some point in the news, in some pictures and so on. And progressively, you will learn more and more and more. So keeping the secret on something that is going to be largely diffused, that is going to be available in large numbers, is very, very difficult. It is much easier to preserve the secret of what can be seen, as I said before, performances, uh, some features and so on. But the existence, well, that is going to emerge. But there is another reason which is even more compelling because secret weapons don't really exist. Secret weapons don't exist because the primary purpose of every weapon is deterrence. If you don't know that a weapon exists, it is a weapon that you can't use to exert deterrence. Wars are not fought to destroy your opponent, to kill everyone till the last man. Wars are fought to force your opponent to do what you want. And the best way of doing so is convincing your opponent that you are so powerful that resistance is futile. It also works in the opposite direction. You may want to convince your opponent that albeit your opponent is stronger, you will be such a hard nut to crack that the damages that you can inflict to them is not worth a war. This is a principle that is absolutely not new. Normally people at this point mention Sun Tzu, but even the Greeks knew this very well. Everything concerning humans has been already described in the classics, so wow. If, for example, the United States had a large fleet of space planes, but nobody knew, nobody knew, nobody had even a hint of their existence, then any opponent may take the decision of attacking the United States more lightly. This is also related to the old story of the United States always under claim, while Russia and China always overclaim. That makes little sense. You don't want to let the opponents know exactly your real capabilities, but you don't want to give an idea that is too skewed because otherwise deterrence may not work. From one side and from the other side, if it is clearly absurd, again, deterrence doesn't work either. So you can see that anything substantial, anything that is visible, will not stay secret for long. I'm sure that there are weapons that today are secret in development, that's a given, but if they get anywhere near the operational or testing stage, then we will know their, about their existence. And if you're thinking this is not the case, you're doing a, a disservice to yourself, as an observer of these things, and if you are an American citizen, the disservice is even bigger because, well, you are a taxpayer. Mind, I am speaking more about the Americans because it tends to happen with the Americans. 
but I mean, it's by no means confined to the Americans. I had emails or messages or comments from uh, Russians, Chinese people, um, French people, whatever, that had this sort of passion for a game that it seems really related to the size of something, but it really makes very little practical sense. So, thank you for watching this video. Sorry for the setting, but the doctor told me that I have to go out and walk. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So, I believe this is it for this short video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.